all right critters welcome to today's 3d print today we are going to go over the upgrades and modifications i made to my cr10 v2 and also talk about what i discovered with the artillery genius so stay tuned actually had to go to the wide angle camera to get this picture but here we have my CR10 V2. Uh, one of the first upgrades I made to it was this titanium 1.2 millimeter nozzle. Didn't work as good as I'd hoped. Well, I kind of figured it wasn't going to work. I was hoping it would work good. But titanium is a poor heat conductor. So unless you're pumping out a crap ton of heat, this is not going to work with a stock hot end. I had to slow down to like 15 millimeters a second in order to avoid the filament cooling too much. Um, so I switched back to a one millimeter brass nozzle and my 1.2 millimeter brass nozzles did finally come in. So I'll be putting a 1.2 on here soon. Or I might just leave the one. It's fine. So anyway, the next upgrade I made was Amy on, I think Amy Chen on Amazon has a BMG extruder. We installed that on this. We had to make the appropriate changes in the firmware, but the firmware is, does have EEPROM. So you can simply put a G-code command to change the steps and the acceleration values. Basically, you have to triple everything regarding the extruder because it's a three to one gear ratio. So you triple all those values and that works. The only issue I have with that, and this is obviously gonna be an issue with most BMG extruders because they're usually direct drive. It takes a long time to get the filament to go through that Bowden tube to the hot end, but it works very well. You can see that bag there is something I printed on my CR10 V2. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a moment so I can switch the magnification. There we go, now I can zoom in a little bit if I need to. So once again, from Amy on Amazon, there is that BMG extruder, it was like $21, pretty cheap. And so far, it works fine. It's a Bontec BMG clone. And the last major upgrade I made to my CR10 V2 is my Wham Bam. I love my freaking Wham Bam sheets. I will never go back to non-flex plates if I can help it ever again. It's just so convenient being able to just pop this plate off, flex it, get rid of the print, and then you pop this plate back on again, and you're ready for your next print that easy. This is their polycarbonate sheet, their PC sheet. The reason I use the PC sheet is because I could turn off the heat bed. This does not require heat to stick. So I turn my heat bed on to 60 centigrade, and at layer 20, I turn my heat bed off, which means when I'm printing for 10, 15, 20, 50, 100, 200 hours, I don't have to be burning electricity at 18 cents a kilowatt that entire time. Once the print is established, I turn off the heat bed and you are golden. So that is your wham bam sheet your BMG extruder clone and the not so great although if you're got a if you got a high temperature um, heat cartridge in there and you're messing with um, abrasive filaments this might work like this would definitely be great at a 0 0.4 0 0.6 um, you know maybe even a 0 0.8 millimeter um, nozzle size because the heat loss wouldn't be so dramatic but at 1.2 millimeters heat loss is too much for a titanium nozzle so if you need high temperature and abrasive protection, and you're gonna be using 0 0.4, 0 0.6, maybe 0 0.8, these nozzles will work nicely. Otherwise, stick with the brass or tool steel, better heat conduction. Wham Bam works great, it gives me no issues, I didn't expect it to. Uh, overall, I am still incredibly impressed with the CR10 V2. It is one of my favorite large format printers. They did just a damn nice job on making this thing. My latest print, I made this up in Tinkercad, I think it's Wolf 3D or something like that. I will post a link down below. He made a barrel wrench. Well, I didn't need a big giant barrel wrench. So I also downloaded a handle off of Thingiverse and combined the two together. So those barrels I got for my kerosene and diesel fuel to heat the house, well, now I can just take this and unscrew the cap on the barrel. So that works very, very well. And this came out beautifully. That is a one millimeter nozzle, 0.4 millimeter layer height. This is Prusament's Mystic Green, and that is Alien um, 3D's Night's War Red. Gorgeous, gorgeous filament. 
But there you go. That is my update on the CR10 V2. Um, installation was no problem. Just got to make the firmware changes. You can actually put the firmware commands in your start script on your SD card of, your, of, of any 3D print and then put an M500 there and it will save those to the box. So you can then remove those commands from your start script and it's now saved. Next up, the Artillery Genius. Here we have the Artillery Genius. I have almost no complaints. They did a phenomenal job on this machine. Um, the assembly was absolutely bulletproof, straightforward. Everything went together perfectly. You could build this machine in 15 minutes if you have built any machines before. Taking your time, 30 minutes tops. It's literally, uh, was it four bolts? Yeah, four bolts. So two bolts there, two bolts there. That entire gantry, which is pre-assembled, installs into the base, four bolts from the bottom. Then you have one thumb screw to slide and attach the spool holder. The spool holder is massively, massively improved over the original. The original sucked, it was horrible. You had to loosen hammer nuts to slide these to move them. It was such a pain in the butt. Oh my God, I hated it. First thing I did was get rid of it. This new one, I love it now. I wanna show you this. So the way this works now is that there's slots built into the unit here. See how the plastic has these built-in slots? That one's fixed. This just sits right inside there. This one here is adjustable. You loosen this thumb screw and this slides back and forth inside this slot. So all but the smallest spools will fit in there, no problem. I am very, very, very impressed with that. They did a good job. I would like to see these be able to go a little smaller. The small spools don't quite fit. Mm, not much you can do about that. Although I do have a possible 3D printable solution. But that's only for the small little tiny sample spools. They give you a problem going in there. Otherwise, very, very impressed. All these ABS injection molded parts fit perfectly. Fit and finish is excellent. So far, I've had zero problems. AC heat bed with a glass plate, which sadly means... You can't put a flex plate on this unless you add the flex plate to the glass, which means you're going to have the mass of both, which is sad. But um, so far, I've had zero issues with the glass plate on here. Um, the biggest problem is if your, your nozzle is too close, it behaves a little differently than normal beds. So if you're getting some weird pulling the filament off the bed problems, you're probably too close. Back the bed off a little bit. Otherwise, zero problems. After you install the four bolts and the one thumb screw for that, you plug in two wires there, two wires here, your power wire here, and you are done. It is one of the fastest, most error-free assemblies I've ever had with a 3D printer. The only adjustment I had to make to this printer out of the box was the X belt was too loose. So I just loosened these two bolts, pushed this out with my finger right there, and retightened it up until it was a little bit of thrumming there. That's all I had to do. I had to do nothing else. The fans are pretty quiet. Part of that is they were able to use a nice, large, quieter fan to exhaust the air out of this encasement because the power supply doesn't have a fan because the power supply only has to power the printer in the hot end because it's an AC heat bed. It's an SSR going directly to the AC heat bed. That reduces the load on the power supply and also reduces the need for noisy fans. The fans on the hot end are also shockingly quiet. They uh, either got lucky or good quality control, whatever it is. Hi, kitty. Um, the fans are excellent. I have zero complaints. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> just they did a good job. I got to give credit where it's due. I still don't like this filament run out here because if the filament breaks between here and here, well, it's not going to tell you anything. It's not going to stop the print. I'd like to see that filament run out down here. Although I could see that being a problem, they would have to build the printer a little taller because otherwise this filament would be here and then your filament would be a tight angle there as you can see right here. Um, this is 250 millimeters, no issues. Now, the one other minor issues that I would like to see corrected, not really corrected, just changes that I would make. There's, um, um, I would like to see the end stop lowered four millimeters or made adjustable. There's eight millimeters left of travel in this bed. This bed is easy to make nice and loose. As you can see, I could push down a little bit and the wheels are really loose. It's not bad. So far, it's worked fine. 
but I can gain four millimeters of build height and make this bed more stable if I could lower it four or five more millimeters. I can lower it eight, so I figure cut the difference four millimeters. So I'd like to see them lower that four millimeters or even better, have two holes at four millimeters and that point right there. So you can pick which point you wanna use or just use a hammer nut and make that adjustable. The advantage of not using a hammer nut is that it's fixed, so it won't deviate in shipment or anything like that. Um, so, I don't know. I would say just lower that 4 millimeters, and that's a good compromise. The other thing that I do not like is the USB thumb drive. I love the fact that they have their nice little branded thumb drive. The problem is, that screaming break me. <laughs> I had the same problem with the Sidewinder X1. That is screaming, just break me off. The solution is really, really easy. All they have to do is switch to these little nano drives. And now your problem is solved. You don't have to worry about breaking that off. Okay? You can get these for about six bucks on Amazon. It's a 16 gigabyte SanDisk drive. But as you can see, big difference in how much of it sticks out of the printer. So this is what I would like to see them switch to. Um, using something like that for their thumb drives to remove that issue of that being broken off there. Touch screen is excellent, although I would still like to see flow rate added to an adjustment when you're printing. Um, beyond that, there's nothing really to say. It's an, They did a fantastic job. It's an excellent printer. Um, assuming everybody else gets similar results when they get their printers, if they can maintain the quality control, if they can not slack on the quality control, because that's what usually happens. They put a you know, they pay a little extra to put a high-grade effort into the first batch of machines, and then, it's not artillery, this is all manufacturers, and then they cut costs by ramping up production. Keep the quality control. If you can keep the quality control, this is definitely a printer I would rate safe to buy. Here are some prints that I made on the printer. The very first one was the Marvin Groot. All these are in Alien 3D Slacker's Knight's War Red. It came out absolutely fantastic. I have zero complaints. My profile is available in the description below. For Simplify 3D, here is the cube that comes pre-sliced. This is the artillery cube. I also printed a vase. It is, in fact, airtight and watertight. So you could put water in this. No problems. Then I printed a deer. This is the Christmas deer. This is actually a pretty challenging print. The four legs print individually. Use a brim. And then um, um, you want that brim to make sure that leg stays down. Because sometimes this leg back here, because it has this larger angle here, will curl a little bit. And it will break this leg free. So use a brim to make that leg survive long enough to attach to the other leg. And then you're fine. There's no cleanup here. This came right off the printer as you see it. The antlers even came out really fantastic. Almost little points, too. It really did a nice job on this. This is actually a pretty challenging print. Then, you have Luby's Sorceress. And she also came out fantastic. Look at those fingers. That's really hard for a printer to get. Very, very nice job. Again, all these are in Knight's War Red. I am impressed. Artillery 3D did a good job. It is the first printer that I've ever reviewed where I had no desire to immediately change anything functional on the printer. The I would like to see that change, but that's a desire. It works fine as it is. I would just like to make that tighter, and I would like a little more build volume, but that's not a mechanically required change. That's also a convenience change. That thumb drive works fine. Okay, so besides those two convenience changes, I did not have to do anything mechanically to this printer to make it work, to make it usable. I was able to build it out of the box and hit go, and it just worked. That's a pretty rare thing. So if you can maintain that quality control, that's a thumbs up from me, Artillery. You did a nice job on this printer. Please maintain that quality control, and you got a nice machine here. That is it. If you have any questions about the upgrades I made to the CR-10 V2 or the Artillery Genius, ask down below. I love when my victims, and I'm sorry, my viewers ask questions. So please ask any questions you might have and I will do my best to answer. You guys have a great day.